Hi everyone, this is my channel Paramedicogenesis. Today video is all about Desflurin. It is a unique inhalation agent used in anesthesia practice. Whether you are anesthesia technologist or curious about the medication used in anesthesia practice, you have come to the right place here. In this video, we will deeping dive into the Desflurin and exploring its property and whole pharmacology and its potential application. So buckle up and get ready to learn all about Desmlore. First, we will see the introduction of the Desmlorin. The first clinical use of Desmlorin was started at 1991, that is 34 years from now. It is a colorless liquid and pungent smell. Yes, it is the same like isoflurane. It also have a pungent smell in the nature. The color coding of the Desmlorin is blue. Now, we remain the color coding of other inhalation agent. Halothene is a red, isoflurane is a purple, sevoflurane is a yellow and the Desmlorin is a blue in color. The blood gas partition coefficient of the desflurane is 0.42 and the oil gas partition coefficient is 19. The MAC value is 6 that is higher than other inhalation agent. So desflurane is less potent comparatively other. Boiling point of the desflurane is 23 degrees Celsius only that is the lower than the room temperature. That is the reason desflurane is standing along the other inhalation agent. We will see the briefly on the coming slide. The molecular weight of desflurane is 168 and the SVP that is a saturated vapor pressure is 664 mm of mercury. It is a higher than other inhalation agent. The molecular formula of desflurane is C3H2F6O that is a isomer of the isofluorine replaced by fluorine atom rather than chlorine. So that is the introduction of the desflurane. Why desflurane wants a special vaporizer? Unlike other inhalation agent, desflurane wants a special vaporizer. Why? Because desflurane have a special talent that has lower boiling point compared to room temperature that will lead to easily evaporation of the desflurane. If desflurane used in normal conventional vaporizer, due to low boiling point, it will easily evaporate to the vapor at large amount. That large amount of vapor will create high saturated vapor pressure that high SVP will produce excessive delivery of desflurane to the patient that will very cautious to the patient not only this problem it will create other problem also that is based upon latent heat of vaporization that means every liquid will convert to the vapor that liquid will lose the heat energy that loss of heat is called latent heat of vaporization due to loss of heat during the convention of vaporization the chlorine will rapidly cooling that cooled desflurane want readily to vapor that lowers the saturated vapor pressure to produce under delivery to the patient of desflurane. So two things will happen. One excessive delivery and under delivery of desflurane to the patient. To dilute the desflurane to safe and usable concentration, we require high pressed gas flow but it can be inefficient and wasteful. So to solve this problem, we developed a special vaporization named Tech 6. What will do? It is uh, electrically heated to maintain a constant temperature around 39 degrees Celsius by keeping warm and to ensure stable saturated vapor pressure to preventing unwanted temperature and pressure fluctuation. So that will ensure the stable delivery of the desflurane to the patient. Pharmacokinetics of the desflurane. The house of pharmacokinetics have a four main pillar that is absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. First absorption. Due to low blood solubility that is 0.42, desflurane rapidly enters to exceed the bloodstream. This characteristics allows the faster induction and emergence from the anesthesia compared to other inhalation anesthetics. Distribution. Distribution has a high volume of distribution, meaning it's distributed throughout the body tissue. It binds moderately to the plasma protein, primarily in albumin. Metabolism. Unlike many other inhalation anesthetics, desflurane underscores minimal metabolism, only about 0.02 to 0.2 percentage to the inhaled dose. It's metabolized by the liver enzyme CYP2E1 to trifluoroacetic acid. Elimination. 
Desflurin is eliminated primarily unchanged through the lungs. Due to its low blood solubility, elimination is rapid. The elimination half-life is the time takes the concentration of the drug in the body decreased by its half. It's only about 6 to 10 minutes only. That is the pharmacokinetics of the Desflurin. Uh, Desflurin is the only inhalation agent to produce carbon monoxide carbon monoxide production. Desflurin, a volatile anesthetic, can interact with desiccated, that is a dried soda lime or berry lime in the anesthesia machine. This interaction it leads to breakdown of the desflurin and production of carbon monoxide. But is a negligible amount so no problem to use the desflurin as far as carbon monoxide production. Desflurin has a potential green glass effect. High global warming potential, Desflurin has a GWP that means global warming potential 2540 which means it traps the heat in the atmosphere 2540 times more effectively than the carbon dioxide over the 100 year period. This makes it one of the most potent greenhouse gases used in clinical settings. Atmospheric accumulation. Once released into the atmosphere, the storing remains there is a long time contributing to the greenhouse effect and global warming. So, the storing is uh, bad for our environmental. Now, we will learn about the pharmacodynamics of the desflurin. The first system in this pharmacodynamics is CNS, is nothing but central nervous system. It produces the unconsciousness, amnesia, and immobility. As far as cerebral blood flow concerned, desflurin acts as a cerebral vasodilator. So, cerebral vasodilator due to the cerebral blood vessel dilating, desflurin increases the cerebral blood flow. As far as ICP concerned, the increasing cerebral blood volume can lead to elevation in ICP, particularly in the patient with compromised intracranial compliance, that is brain tumors and head injury. Cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen consumption. Desplurid decreases the CMRO2, which can protect you in case of cerebral ischemia. The increase in cerebral blood flow can exacerbate the elevations in the ICP, leading to decrease in CPP, that is cerebral perfusion pressure. So, cerebral blood flow increases, ICP also increases, cerebral metabolic rate decreases and cerebral perfusion pressure also decreases in CMS. And the next important system is respiratory system. As far as respiratory system concerned, desflurin like other volatile anesthetic causes dose dependent depression of the respiratory system. This manifests as decreased tidal volume, increased respiratory rate, increased arterial carbon dioxide tension, increased dead space and tidal ventilation ratio, and increased intrapulmonary shunt fraction. And it acts a bronchodilator effect, which can be beneficial in bronchoplastic disease. But it is, has a irritant effect. Desploring can be a respiratory irritant, particularly during induction, leading to coughing, laryngospasm, and increased secretion. The third system is CVS, the very important system in our body, cardiovascular system. First, vasodilation. Desflurin is a potent vasodilator, leading to the decrease in systemic vascular resistance. This can result in hypotension and heart rate. At lower concentration, desflurin typically have a minimal effect on the heart rate. However, at the higher concentration or response in surgical stimuli, it can lead to tachycardia also. Cardiac output. Cardiac output is generally maintained due to compensatory increase in heart rate to offset the decrease of systemic vascular resistance. Myocardial repression. Similar to the volatile anesthetic, the sporin can depress the myocardial contractility, but its effect is usually minimal at clinical relevant concentration. Arrhythmias. While rare, the sporin can contribute to arrhythmias, especially in patients with underlying cardiac condition only. Coronary blood flow. Desflurin increase the coronary blood flow, which can be beneficial in the patient with coronary artery disease. Musculoskeletal system. Dose dependent muscle relaxant is produced by desflurin and potentiate NDMR, that is non depolarizing muscle relaxant. Desflurin also trigger agent of medical and hyperthermia. Hepatic blood flow. Dose dependent decrease in hepatic blood flow. 
will be produced by desflurin as in renal it's direct renal toxicity there is a no evidence to suggest that desflurin directly damage to the kidney so don't fear about the renal while using in desflurin and uterus dose this dependent inhibition the degree of uterine relaxation is directly related to the concentration of the desflurin now we have to load advantage and disadvantage of desflurin advantage rapid onset and offset you, be, due to its lower blood gas solubility its rapid onset and offset is used in daycare anesthesia and minimal metabolism it non toxic to the liver and kidney it's a bronchodilator and muscle relaxation and non epileptogenic and minimal increase in ict the disadvantage is very expensive compared to other inhalation agent and it is a airway return like isoflurane its pungent smell also like isoflurane its need for special vaporizer and it produced major green gas effect and global warming and it is a trigger agent of molecular hyperthermia like other inhalation agent so hope this video very clear knowledge about the disfluorine i will meet the another video as soon as possible until the signing of jerry asko this is paramedico genesis